Good evening ladies and gents, YouTube, uh, sorry TikTokers, Instagrammers. I've done a shorter version for you guys because it'll only do 10 minute videos. We are going to be looking at the Mary Stanford lifeboat house and the tragedy of the Mary Stanford lifeboat. The former lifeboat house was built in 1882 and named after Mary Stanford lifeboat. This is the Mary Stanford lifeboat house which we'll see more of in a minute. On the 15th of November 1928 Mary Stanford was lost of all 17 crew. Um, this is the largest loss of life of a single lifeboat in the history of the Royal Naval Lifeboat Institute. The lifeboat house was never used by a lifeboat again. At 5am the Mary Stanford was called to assist Latvian steamer the Alice of Riga. The crew ran from Har Rye Harbour to the lifeboat house which is all the way from over there all the way from over there all the way along this sea path and down to here to the lifeboat house and then to launch a lifeboat crew ran from Rye Harbour to the lifeboat house and launched the lifeboat around 6.45am in a fierce southwesterly gale. Just as they were leaving, news came that the Alice's crew had already been rescued. A signal was fired to recall the Mary Stanford, but nobody saw it in the driving rain and rushed to get away. Three and a half hours later, a boy collecting driftwood on Camber Sand saw the Mary Stanford capsize. Every man on board was drowned. The tight-knit fishing community of Rye Harbour Village was devastated. At the churchyard in Rye Harbour you can see a memorial to the men who served on the Mary Stanford, that's where they're buried as well. Just pause to read any descriptions. These are the faces of the men at the Mary Stanford. A lot of the younger ones that you see would have been lifeboatmen at the time that ran the Mary Stamford disaster happened. And here is the Mary Stamford. It was a Royal Naval lifeboat supplied in 1916. The previous lifeboat pictured here, sorry this isn't the Mary Stamford, beg your pardon, pictured here was the John William Dudley. Both boats were only powered by sails and oars, so the Mary Stamford would have looked very much like this. This aerial photograph shows the site of the disaster. be in a part one and a part two actually. I was going to try and do it in part one and part two. But I can't get it all in and I want to do these men and their memory justice. The lifeboat was pulled back onto the shore using the capstan. The capstan ran from doors that were out the back of the Mary Stanford lifeboat house that were bricked up now but we'll see that in a minute. You see the both doors at both ends, and this is what it would have looked like back in its day. This is a picture from the 40s, so not too long after. I do beg your pardon about the wind, I can't help that. I shall now pause you and join me at the Mary Stanford lifeboat. So here we are. Out of this wind. Too much wind. This is known as lover's wall. People, it's a bit of an old tradition here. They carve a lover onto the wall, scratch a lover onto the wall with their initials in it, hoping to have a blessing from the sailors. There's a lot of old, uh, this, the sailors and sea wives and everything, Kent and Sussex, they were very, very superstitious people. Very. 
which is why this lifeboat house was never used again afterwards. Um, the men would have believed it cursed, and with such a disaster, they would have been like, you would want to uh, go back to where your friends and family, and a lot of the men that were there, some of them were like, you had a father and two sons, then you had three brothers from one family, so this disaster wiped out families. And here we see the doors that it said about where the uh, capstan would have gone, where they would have launched their lifeboat out into the sea. After running all the way from Rye Harbour, which is a good distance of about five miles, and then out into that to try and save people, unfortunately, well not unfortunately for the people that had been saved, but they'd been saved already, and uh, the poor men were lost. seabirds there they'll be going along eating. I've read the name of them about six times and I still keep forgetting it so do forgive me. That is fair light so called because uh, there used to be a warning beacon there in the days before mass technology where you could get a warning from one end of the country to another especially in the Napoleonic Wars and the Tudor era. There were beacons set on all the promontories and when an invasion was spotted they'd be lit and they'd send the message inland and where there wasn't beacons the churches would ring their bells backward and they could get a message of invasion from Sussex or Kent to London in about 15 minutes which is pretty good for the day. back at the sign to focus a little bit more on this I rushed it a little bit because I was going to do this in a one part video but I'll do it in a two parter while well, I'm doing this Simon and Roberto are taking their pictures over at the lifeboat house he's got a pretty um, not a camera phone but decent camera really really uh, decent Robbie's into his editing and all that kind of thing so some nice pictures actually. I've got one of these at home. If you find one of these with a hole in it, it's going to be very good luck and to be a blessing from the sea. I told you they were superstitious here. Well, I was saying that I can't speak, I'm very superstitious. deal of it but just a tiny little old fishing village but very very nice and the church obviously will be the next part of this
Good morning ladies and gents and you join me on a wet and not too windy Sunday morning. There's no wind actually at all so that's fine. I've got a nice big umbrella and everything's good. We're at the church of uh, Rye Harbour, Rye Harbour Churchyard. Just do this bit first. To the memory of the 17 brave men the crew of the Mary Stanford lifeboat who perished in a heavy gale while gallantly responding to the call for help from the SS Alice of Riga on the morning of the 15th of November 1928. We have done that which was our duty. We'll start with the men's names. This is part two, as I said. Part one was filmed yesterday. Charles Sutherland, aged 22 years. Leslie George Clark, aged 24 years. And his brother, William Thomas Albert Clark, aged 27 years. Walter Eaglesden, aged 38 years. Then you've got three brothers here, which is Louis Alexander Pope, aged 21 years. Robert Henry Pope, aged 23 years. Charles Frederick David Pope, aged 28 years. And then you've got the Joseph Stonham, or Stonham, second Coxswain, aged 43 years. Herbert Head, coxswain of the boat, aged 47 years. Henry Cutting, bowman, aged 39 years. Bear the names Pope and Cutting in mind. Oh gosh, these trainers are going to need a good clean. John Stanley Head, aged 17 years. His brother, James Alfred Head, aged 19 years. Two more brothers, Morris Downey, aged 23 years. Arthur William Downey, aged 25 years. Albert Ernest Smith, aged 44 years. Albert Ernest Cutting, who is the son, or one of the sons of the gentleman Cutting that we saw just now at the head of the grave. Um, Albert Ernest Cutting, aged 26 years, and his brother, Robert Redvers Cutting, aged 28 years. The unusual middle name Redvers was his mother's maiden surname. Henry Cutting, here we are. Ugh. <clears throat> Sorry, and beg, beg your pardon, I've just remembered he wasn't their father, he was their uncle. And here are the parents of Albert and Robert Redvers Cutting. William Cutting, who entered into rest 22nd of January 1930, aged 67. Also, Charlotte, Charlotte Cutting, beloved wife of the above, who entered into rest 13th of September 1948 aged 82 years. And this one is Elizabeth Head, who died the 5th of March, 1935, aged 81 years. And she is I think she was the mother of Herbert Head, if my memory serves me right. And we see the name here, two names, Robert Henry Pope and Charles Frederick David Pope. And here we are, is Julia Annie Pope, who passed, away peace, who passed peacefully away June the 15th, 1929, aged 58 years. Beloved are the dead who die in the Lord. 
before they rest from their labours. And then you've got also George Henry Pope, husband of the above, died January the 15th, 1943, at peace. Julia Pope, she was the mother of Robert Henry and Charles Frederick, and George Henry was their father, of course. Cutting, which is another surname, where did we see Cutting? Henry Cutting there, who's at the end. The Bowman, aged 39 years. And that was, I, think that was the, I don't know if there was any cut. I can't remember if there's any cuttings on the other side. But here, look, you've got in loving memory of Ivy Cutting, always in our hearts. Um, this grave was in quite a bad state last time I came. It's one of those... 1940s concrete type stones and they do not last long in a coastal area with a lot of sea content in the air it's a lot of salt content in the air sorry and this one's been recently done up but ivy cutting is a descendant of these cuttings here sorry of the cuttings on the memorial there and the cuttings that are mentioned in that grave over there right ladies and gents and that is the Mary Stamford lifeboat tragedy. And if I can find any footage of a lifeboat of that era, that will follow the video. If this is this part of the video, if not, that's your lot. Take care all and uh, rest in peace to all these brave men.